Good evening, everyone. If we could stand for the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, How Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. How Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. How Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Gerald Sullivan. In our Gospel today, Jesus encounters many people, all have good excuses why they shouldn't follow him. Jesus, though, says that we should be good disciples, that we should be people who are followers of Christ. Of course, there are times when we do not want to follow Christ. There are times we do not follow him as well as we should. And so for these times, let's call to mind our sins, trusting in the mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, Go, you are to anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, of Abel, Mohala, as prophet to succeed you. Leaving there, Elijah came on Elisha, son of Saphat, and he was plowing behind twelve yoke of oxen, he himself being with twelve. Elijah passed near to him, drew his cloak over him. Elijah left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you. He said, Elijah answered, go, go back for I have done anything for you. Have I done anything to you? Elijah turned away, took the pair of oxen and slaughtered them. He used the plow for cooking the oxen, then gave to his men who ate. He then rose and followed Elijah and became his servant. This is the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord even in my sight. Since he's at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved become decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand, happiness forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. When Christ freed us, he meant us to remain free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. My brothers, you were called, as you know, to liberty. But be careful, or this liberty will provide an opening for self-indulgence. Serve one another, rather, in work of love, since the whole of law is summarized in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you go snapping at each other and tearing each other to pieces, you had better watch or you will destroy the whole community. Let me put it like this. If you are guided by the Spirit, you will be in no danger of yielding to self-indulgence, since self-indulgence is the opposite of the Spirit. The Spirit is totally against such a thing, and it is precisely because the two are so opposed that you do not always carry out your good intentions. If you are led by the Spirit, no law can touch you. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As the time drew near for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely took the road for Jerusalem and sent messengers ahead of him. These set out, and they went into a Samaritan village to make preparations for him. But the people would not receive him because he was making for Jerusalem. Seeing this, the disciples James and John said, Lord, do you want us to call down heaven, fire from heaven to burn them up? But he turned and rebuked them and they went off to another village. As they travelled along, they met a man on the road who said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another to whom he said, Follow me, replied, Let me go and bury my father first. But he answered, Leave the dead to bury their dead. Your duty is to go and spread the news of the kingdom of God. 
Another said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go and say goodbye to my people at home. Jesus said to him, once the hand is laid on the plow, no one who looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, I've got a, a letter uh, from our, our bishop today uh, that he wants me to read out for you, which I will do. Uh, but I just want to say a few things about the gospel um, because it's a fascinating gospel. So I just want to say a few words about that before I share our words from the bishop. James and John, who we hear about in the first part of that gospel, I think are fascinating characters. Um, now, we don't know a lot about them, but we do know this. James and John are the ones um, that ask their mum to ask Jesus for places of honour when Jesus comes into his kingdom. So one suspects um, the motives as to why James and John were part of the apostles. Were they in it for the glory? Because they did think, and the, the, uh, lots of people thought this, that Jesus was going to come and he was going to sort of scatter the Roman Empire who were occupying their land, and that he was going to be a sort of a, a warrior king, uh, and that once he'd scattered the foe and, and vanquished them, that he would sit on a throne and be served. But Jesus over and over and over again said to them, I have not come to be served, but to serve, but to serve. I, I, I wash your feet. And then, of course, the ultimate sort of a uh, uh, symbol of service, he dies on the cross uh, for them. And so, yes, they, they learn quite quickly that Jesus' idea of glory is very different to theirs. His was one of service. Theirs was one of power, one of might, one of being served. And he turns that around. So James and John are, are quite quite interesting characters. And today we hear another quite uh, interesting side of their character. Now, uh, they ask Jesus whether they should call down fire and lightning from heaven to destroy the Samaritans, because the Samaritans won't have anything to do with Jesus. Why? Because he's on his way to Jerusalem. The Samaritans didn't think that you should worship in Jerusalem that the Samaritans really didn't have a lot of time for mainstream Judaism. And Jesus, despite this, tells them, no, you, you shouldn't call down fire from heaven. Now, it's interesting because the Samaritans and mainstream uh, Jewish uh, Orthodox uh, people would often have disagreements and that they would often clash. But Jesus as we heard in our, as we hear in our Gospels, ref, refers to the good Samaritan. And throughout the Gospel, he does speak well of people from Samaria, Samaritans. So he's saying to them, look, I'm not going to just throw these people away. You know, I'm not going to dismiss these people simply because they will not welcome us. It's interesting uh, that James and John wanted to call fire down upon them, but Jesus stops them. No. Now, we know that, that today, the very, very often, unfortunately, we're, we're in this kind of cancelled culture that, 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 that means that if you maybe accidentally use the prone, a wrong pronoun for someone in a tweet or you do something minor or, or even something major, that's it, you're off, you're cancelled. Even if it's discovered um, that you were innocent. We find that people will be cancelled. That's it. You know, I don't want anything to do with you. And say they're an entertainer, an actor, or whatever it might be, that's it. They're no longer in major films anymore. They're completely written off because they've made a mistake at some point in their history. Sometimes you find, you know, that, that, that people will find an old tweet or something they've written on, on Facebook and it's dragged out after 10 years and, said, and, and it's sort of pushed into their faces. Look, you said this, you did that, you're off, you're out. Now, Jesus, I think, wouldn't have 
anything to do with that kind of culture. Now, that's not to say, of course, that when someone does, says or does something wrong, that we shouldn't say you shouldn't do that. Of course, of course, justice um, should always be served, I think, but it should always be tempered with mercy. And I think that's what Jesus was saying to James and John, these, this unusual uh, uh, couple who, who thought that Jesus uh, was going to come into his glory, who thought that, that Jesus would bring down fire and brimstone on those who disagreed with him. Jesus engaged with people that challenged him. He, you know, he'd walk into situations where people would want to discuss things and, and argue with him. Jesus didn't dismiss them. He spent time with them until they, they found a resolution. And so I, I love the, the way he speaks to James and John. Um, and I think there's something in it for our culture too. Now, we also hear, uh, as I say, a string of people who have reasons, and let's be honest, very good reasons, why they shouldn't follow Jesus. One seems to doesn't like didn't seem, doesn't seem to like the idea that Jesus doesn't have a home, that he's I, uh, what they refer to as an itinerant preacher. You know, someone who doesn't have a home, a regular place to go back to. He w he could have stayed, of course, in a number of places, but she, Jesus chose to go from place to place to place to place, and someone we are not told who didn't like it, and so. They say no. And then another has a very good reason. Let me go and bury my father first. But Jesus says, no, you must follow me. Another one wants to just go back and say goodbye to, to his family uh, before he follows Jesus. And Jesus says, no, once you start, you don't look back. All of these are really good reasons. As a vocations director, if someone said to me, can, can, I, can I wait uh, until I go into seminary, for any of those reasons, I would understand. But Jesus has a burning passion that people follow him. And, and there's no, it seems, from listening to our gospel today, that there's no reason he would accept as to why they shouldn't follow him. What can we learn from this? Well, very often we can find excuses, can't we, not to do something. Um, I actually, I'll share this with you, a weakness of mine. I don't like heights and I don't like lifts. And, but I remember when I was in New York with a priest friend of mine, he wanted to go to the Empire State Building and go to the very top. And he wouldn't do it without me. And so I said, look, I don't like heights and I don't like lifts and I'm going to have to go in two of those. I'll be exposed to two of those reasons if we go up. And he said, no, I, well, I won't go. And I said, no, no, we'll go up. And I remember praying really hard in this really tiny lift as you had to go up two to get to the top. But I loved it when I got to the top. It was an it was extraordinary experience. And I could think of loads of things, times in my lives where I thought, oh, I'm not sure if I, if I want to do this, because, and, the, and, and I had very good reasons not to do it, but decided to do it anyway, and the experience was extraordinary. Well, these people who have these excuses not to follow Jesus, they were all good, but they missed out. But they, they missed out on following Jesus and spending time with him, listening to him, watching him perform extraordinary miracles. That's what they missed out on. And so those excuses, as good as they are, it was they that missed out. And there are times in our lives, I think, where we think, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do this, you know, and yet there is a need to do it. Let's pray that we may have the courage to do what Christ asks of us, even if we've got really good excuses not to do it. I remember as a child, my mum and dad asking me to do things, and I'd have really good reasons not to do it, not to clean my room, uh, not to do this, not to do that, not to go to school. Sometimes I'd find really good reasons not to go to school, but I would have missed out if they'd listened to me. And so today, let's pray that we may have the courage to follow Christ, but also that we will, like Christ, um, have mercy for those that sometimes we find difficult. Amen. So.
that said, I want to read the pastoral message marking the 10th World Meeting of Families from our bishop. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this Sunday marks the end of the year of the family, which Pope Francis started in 2021. The conclusion of this year is marked by a gathering in Rome, the 10th World Meeting of Families, and as part of his Sunday Angelus, Pope Francis will bless all families throughout the world. One of the greatest insights of the Second Vatican Council is that everyone is called to holiness to become a saint. And in this Sunday's Gospel, Jesus gives a clear, if challenging, message about the urgency of following him, whoever we are and whatever the cost. But holiness does not simply equate with one particular way of life. Pope Emeritus Benedict once said that there are as many paths to heaven as there are people. Though it is always Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, who leads the way and opens the door, our journey is unique to each one of us. If we try and follow another person's path, we will soon lose our way and grow disheartened. Instead, we must allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit on the path that is meant for us. Depending on our own particular vocation, our work or our family life should not be an obstacle to holiness, but rather the very means by which God wants to make you holy. We all find ourselves in very challenging times, including war in Europe and increasing econ economic uncertainty. Pope Francis, in his letter to married couples, recalled Jesus' miracle of the coming of the sea and said, Marriage, as a vocation, calls you to steer a tiny boat, wave-tossed yet sturdy, thanks to the reality of the sacrament across a sometimes stormy sea. Let us never forget, though, that by the virtue of the sacrament of matrimony, Jesus is present in that boat. He is concerned for you, and he remains at your side amid the tempest. Whenever we find ourselves in stormy waters, we have the wonderful guarantee that Christ, who alone fills us with joy, is always with us. With all good wishes and prayers, in Christ and Mary, Bishop Alan Williams, the Society of Mary, and the Bishop of Brentwood. stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving Lord, in today's Gospel, you describe yourself as homeless because instead of settling in one place, you were always on the move, searching out the people who needed your care. Today, we remember the needs of the world and those who are part of our own life and journey. We remember Pope Francis and all religious leaders May they inspire individuals, many individuals, communities, and governments to show compassion for the most vulnerable people in their midst. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the people of Afghanistan as they cope with the aftermath of this week's earthquake. May those who have died have eternal life, those who mourn be comforted, and may all find the courage and strength and support that they need at this tragic time. 
Lord, in your mercy. We remember the men and women with responsibilities for national and local government and legislation. May they work for the good of those whom they serve and nurture communities of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the people of Ukraine and other battle-torn areas of the world. May they know peace, security, and the comfort of their own homes. Lord, in your mercy. We remember our families and all who are experiencing financial and employment difficulties at this present time. May they know hope-filled solutions to their, to their challenges and grow ever close to their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. We remember children and young people who will soon know big changes to their lives as they come to the end of their academic year. May their schools, colleges, universities, and apprenticeship and workplaces help them to achieve their hopes and dreams. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to Our Lady to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Take a moment of silence for our own intercessions. Lord God, be with us and with everyone we know and love. Help us to come closer to you, who love us more than we can possibly imagine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hand, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hand, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. So, through him, the host of angels adores you and with one voice of praise we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brother Gerald, who has fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that in the world and now my soul shall be healed. Let the body of Christ be safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ can be safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. I'd like to be seated just for a, a few notices. So you've heard me say uh, a little while ago that um, the parish players, who's our drama group, are back. And they're back on Friday the 1st and Saturday the 2nd of July. And they're putting on a murder mystery. There's only two performances, so make sure you get your tickets. Um, Anita Chaplin will be coordinating. See her phone number in the newsletter. There will also be people uh, at all masses to sell. And today we have Tina Carroll at the back of the church who will be selling those tickets. Um, so uh, if you can, please do buy a ticket. Uh, I know it's quite short notice uh, because I think the 1st and the 2nd of July is next week. Um, so, um, but it, I'm, they're all, it's always a great performance. Um, so please uh, buy one and come along if you can. Now the next baptism course will be Monday the 4th of July. Um, and so uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, application forms are in the back of the church in the porch. Please ask myself for one of the ushers. And we have an urgent appeal from our food bank. Demand for food and support continues to rise. And the expectation is that this will continue for the foreseeable future. As said previously, if you can bring just one tin, it will be an enormous help. So next week, if you can, bring something. It could be anything at all, anything, just one thing, and we'll be able to fill our, uh, our basket at the back, and we'll be able to help people who are desperate at this time. Um, now, I do know that there are people being fed in different places uh, uh, around this area, but people still come uh, for food. So, uh, please, if you can, just spare one thing and bring it with, with you next week um, so that we can help those in need. Today, I attended the ordination of a priest of our diocese, a new priest. His name is Father Damien Wade. He was one of my first that came to me as a vocations director when I was still in Onga, and I've seen him grow and grow. And he's a wonderful fella, and uh, I saw him today ordained at St. Peter and St. Paul's in Ilford, uh, Father Damien Wade. So he's from uh, Dublin, just outside Dublin, but decided to join us in our diocese because he was a uh, teacher at the De La Salle School in Basildon. So he's been one of ours for some time, but then decided to go forward for ordination, and today was the day. Now, I have four people, young men, who are inquiring at the moment who might apply very soon. So please do keep vocations in your prayers. Uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, um, you may have picked up a, a, a card to pray for vocations. If you, if you have, then pray that prayer if you can. Uh, if not, then um, do pray yourself for vocations. They are coming. They are coming. Um, unfortunately, this year, we've lost seven active priests for our diocese, and we've only ordained one. So please do keep very much um, vocations in your prayers at this time. Let's stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.